We are gathered here today to reverently consider a grove of trees. Is it an important grove of trees? Well, not on a worldwide scale, it doesn't matter at all. Even here in this enormous forest, it's just a tiny grove. It's a couple acres, I'd say. I, I'd have to measure it with a GPS or something. Uh, but it had a pine beetle plague, and so we have gone ahead and killed a whole bunch of young pine trees that were here because they were going to die anyway and then they were going to infect all the other pine trees around them. So for the protection of the larger forest we have murdered those trees. That's okay, the wood will get used for good things. And I want to talk about this grove of trees not because I care about it, which I do. I like this grove just like I like that one over there and Every single part of this land is very important to me. But it's to think about how we think about things like this. How we think about each piece of land and, and every blob of plants that exist. And so we want to think about the systems that it's in. It's the ways of thinking about it that matter. And it can even be metaphorical. So it's beyond just forestry. Although, ultimately, it's forestry. You know, I, I want to spread different ways of viewing how we treat land and how we shape land. So the first thing that comes to mind when we kill all these trees is that it's a big change and that there's opportunity there to do other things with this land. And then I remember permaculture principle zero, which I came up with. They start with one. I think there's 12 permaculture principles. But permaculture principle zero is do nothing. I think there's a Wiccan thing like that. I think there's a Hippocratic oath like do no harm or something. <laughs> Although the hypocrisy of that is that doctors don't follow the Hippocratic oath. Uh, what happens if we do nothing? Well, first of all, we won't do anything bad. And as humans, we're really good at doing very bad things. So doing nothing is a good start. Let's imagine what happens if we do nothing right here. Well, this particular area is completely filled with little oak trees like this one. And it has madrone trees and it has native plants in it that are now going to get more light, although it wasn't very dark in there. These were fairly young trees, which was one of the reasons it kind of hurt me that, that we had to cut them. You know, I, I want to see trees mature to their full potential. And uh, that's okay though. Um, so more life will fill it in. If we do nothing in 10 years, this will all be grown over with some pines, a bit more of oaks and madrones and probably some hawthorns in there. Yeah, there's madrone over there. Uh, and there'll be more habitat for animals and everything will be just fine. So nothing is required in this case, but we do have some opportunities. So we're going to violate permaculture principle zero because we have a whole bunch of other principles that matter too, like gaining a yield or things like that. And there's, this is a very important grove because it's extremely central to a lot of places. We're going to walk around it and consider what we would want to think about. Uh, it is surrounded by road. There is road on every side of it, and that's actually good also because that means there's a space between these pine trees and the pine trees nearby. So it's less likely that, that, that these infected trees will infect those, which I'm even more attached to because I really like that grove of trees over there, and I'm not ready for that one to, to go through big changes. Over on the other side over there, well, we'll talk about when we're there, but there was a forest fire that changed things a lot. This particular one's never been burned, which actually does remind me that one good idea for it is to do a controlled burn. Not this time of year because it's too dry, but uh, I, you know, it's very healthy for the soil to burn at times. And so it might be a very good idea next time when the rains are coming, when, when, they're, when the rains start, but it, everything's not too wet. Then we can get a bunch of guys and a bunch of beer, women too, I mean guys in a general sense. Even if that offends somebody, I don't care. Get over it. Uh, <laughs> a bunch of, bunch of hands out here and uh, have shovels and everything and, 
and have a very nice controlled burn party uh, where we just burn the under the under story of it all the pine needles that have collected there over the years and that's going to make a nice ashy layer that then we could throw seeds onto so we could actually increase the biodiversity of it both with native plants and uh, affect the mycology of it there are certain mushrooms that are affected well by having a forest fire like morel mushrooms come after forest fires for example i hadn't thought of that till just now that's because it's an opportunity i'm really wondering okay what is the opportunity that i'm being given here um, the other thing is that it does open up more light coming into this general area uh, and that affects the uphill side we'll, we'll get up there uh, the other big thing here and we're going to observe this all the way around it is water flow uh, this road here is not completely flat and generally I like roads to be really flat to keep water from going downhill right now that's not a big deal I don't want water going down my my up down slope road over here and over here I've got a slight gully which is interesting the water naturally comes into this gully I think that there's an opportunity I mean I have bulldozer work I want to do here anyway there is an opportunity to raise this road up a little bit and trap the water up on that side and perhaps even make a little pond or something, make a wetter spot. Often what you're trying to do with sculpting land for water use is to, to distribute the water better. You know, like there's key line design where you want to move water to the ridges and you're trying to slow its flow downhill. But that doesn't always have to be the case. I might want to have a wetter place. Wet spots are good too. <laughs> so, um, so, so it could be that, that if we, you know, if someone, I have a bunch of bulldozer work I want to do anyway. It could be that I could uh, raise this up right here and then up above, let the water kind of fill that in and make a little bit of a moisture spot. It's, it's, it's optional. It's, it's all optional. Um, just in, in cutting these trees so far, we're not even done yet. Right, we've, we've pulled out four truckloads of wood, big ones, with a team of like five guys. Uh, and there was one today, so that's actually five altogether. And there's probably another four to six loads. I don't know, I'm not expert at evaluating that. But, but essentially, after this all gets cut, everything I'm thinking about now, everything we're going to talk about, is going to get rethought because we'll suddenly be able to see the landscape in a different way. Also, some of the pines are species which don't get infected as much or don't get or can recover. And so those will still be here. And I don't know which ones those are yet. I've got a great team of guys and they know all about trees. They know way more than I do about pine beetle plagues and everything. I've got two twisted trees that are artistically interesting. I would love it if those make it through this process. I would like to leave those. There is another thing with pine trees though, is that they tend to fall over. And so having pine trees in an area limits what you can do in that area safely. Like I wanna put little buildings in different spots or maybe have safe camping for people, you know, in their little van or whatever. And I don't want a pine tree to fall on them because that might put people in a bad mood. <laughs> Now we've already used this dip here and down below it. Oh, there's my bamboo right there. It's big now. Uh, we put bamboo over here because we know this is a little bit wetter spot, even though we already changed this gully a little bit. So that's a different grove though. Uh, bamboo is certainly an option to put in uh, bamboo on this side where it's wetter. I have timber bamboo, which is super useful and it does not grow well in almost anywhere I put it because it's too dry here and bamboo wants a lot of water and so that is something I hadn't thought of I mean I mentioned a pond but a pond may not have water all year and it may be that it's actually a pond of bamboo which is not a pond but the point is that you know there's there's water under the soil zooming around and we have to figure out how to use that properly this area which was part of this grove God, I hope this one doesn't have pine beetle infection. I, I doubt it does, it's further away. So, But this area right here, we did bulldoze. Uh, the last time I bulldozed was 10 years ago. 
It took me nine years to get a bulldozer in here because I really don't want to mess it up. I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's a dangerous thing to rip up the earth like that. Um, and, I, and I did well. I, I thought so long and hard before, before I made uh, any decisions about having a bulldozer here. And it was a big one, big dangerous bulldozer. So it bulldozed a flat spot here. That's just growing over anyway. We'll look at another one up there. But this one's inside the grove. It's inside this perimeter. Uh, probably edit that out. I don't edit much. Screw it. So, yeah, this is a flat spot in here that I had thought of was going to be like a place to camp and RVs and stuff, but it naturally has a bunch of these baby pines in here, whole bunches of them, and I just like how they've grown up. And so I'm still going to maybe want to recover it, but I now have opportunities to make other flat spots, so I'm going to have to forget my plan from before and wonder what's the new plan. You know, and where would I want to camp? For example, the sun is going to hit in here earlier in the day on the upper side of this now. So we want to look at the water, but we also want to consider where the sun's going to be at all day long. And that's going to affect where we plant or where we use for humans. Wow, look at all this dried firewood here. This has been here for 10 years. <laughs> and it's still usable firewood. It didn't even fully rot. Things take a while here to rot. Look at this oak tree over here is is bent over in a weird cool looking way so it, it is itself art so one of the things we're going to want to do is look at every possible tree here and wonder you know is it already art could we sculpt it uh, what should happen with that now going up here I'm not sure I don't see any signs of plague on this one I'm not sure how many we're going to cut like I don't know if we need to cut up here I don't think we do. But this would be a great place. There's nothing right here. We've never put anything right here. I could actually flatten that out and somebody could pull a van in there and camp. Be a great spot and it wouldn't even really affect anything. And these particular pine trees aren't super dangerous. Uh, this one does have kind of scary looking dead branches that are gonna fall down on some, you know, they're gonna fall down someday. So that's disturbing. Now we're walking around the whole thing because uh, when you think about any particular space or thing, this is a little bit metaphorical, uh, you have to figure out its connections to everything else. Like there's a big spot over here. This is the place that did have a forest fire before. It's really healthy. It's very happy. There's still big trees in here, lots of them. Um, you know, these are low fires that, that don't burn usually the whole tree. Some trees did die but not very many. But I, I'm thinking I want to run on a road that actually goes inside there, down into that gully uh, on contour. But this one goes up here, so I want one that goes on contour down through there. So that would affect that grove over there, which affects this grove a little bit. This is so beautifully central. It's very highly valuable. Up on this upper side, I want to put a road that connects to a road up there. Now that's not within the grove, but it affects it. Yeah, I'm seeing some options for camping in here. Uh, it's really interesting to look at this, even after we haven't finished cutting it. And think about it, look at the size of this big pine. Wow, that's big. And the thing is, all around these, there's baby trees. That's why I no longer, you know, cry over over murdered or dead pine trees you know the pine beetles had a good time they're not worried about it although i usually don't uh, when i think about life and wildlife i'm usually not thinking a lot about pine beetles <laughs> but they're part of the ecosystem so now we're at the top of this gully that goes all the way through this i think that's the most distinguishing attribute of this thing is this very minor gully it's very small but but it really does have a big effect this one gully, especially since this road kind of gathers even more water into it, 
is just grown over like crazy. We put more bamboo up in here. There's some right over there. It's grown over with native plants. All this needs to be cleaned up so we can see what we're, what we're working with. There's actually a spot you could park right over there or camp or whatever. And so in here, what we need is a team of people to go in and, and just clear out some of the some of this stuff we've got too much of anyway. The harachina, all these acacias, I've, I've gotten more annoyed with the acacias. A long time ago, I briefly thought there weren't enough of them, and so we spread seeds of them around. And now I just think they're kind of annoying. So um, I, I don't care if we kill lots of acacias. This plant here is not too exciting. Of course, even a plant that I'm not excited by is still part of the ecosystem. And so there might be birds that like it. I know the bees like the harachina. But it just grows like crazy. It's, it's insane. It's not a problem. Uh, here we've got some bananas. This is not in the grove. But we've got some weird species of musensete that we planted. And so we have opportunities to put bananas down in here as well. They look really cool. They're very exotic looking. Big leaves. Oh, there's a lot of bamboo in here. I forgot we put all this in there. I mean, you, you put in something like that and you kind of forget about it. And, and then years later, it's like, whoa, we have all this stuff you know, a long time later. It's a very slow project. Um, all this land in here has never been utilized for anything. There's no trail through it. There should be. Somewhere in here, I want to put a trail all the way through it. Um, I could put a road. If anything, there is a road on that side over there by, by the Extasis hut. There's a, there's a hut that's, I guess it's part of this grove. Yeah, it's part of this grove, sort of. And this area actually could be developed. There could even be a building here. That's totally possible. Um, and, and a road could connect from this, this road here to the lower road down there. That actually might be useful. And that would make a big circle, a big, because I want all my roads to be one way. That makes them narrower. I don't, I like, I don't want to have as much road footprint. And my current theory is that one-way roads have less footprint. Also, I don't like the idea of ever head, going head-on with another car. I don't like that. Cars are scary. Cars are big and annoying. And cars hit each other, and then people get hurt. So if all my roads are one-way, uh, then, then that gets rid of that problem. And I think, mathematically, it uses less physical footprint on the land. I guess it could make it so you'd have to drive around further in some cases to get somewhere. But we don't like to drive around anyway. People should drive in, park, and stop. All right, so we're still on this grove. So that's a crazy idea is to, this is a big bulldozer job, is to connect this road to that one. Now, it, the problem is, it, depending on the angle, uh, I mean, I want each intersection to be such that you can use it going either direction. So even though they're single lane, one way roads, I want the, the, us to be able to use them in either direction. And that way I don't have to decide what's the smartest way to, to choose which one goes in which direction. I, I don't have to make that mistake. Also, because who knows, maybe a car breaks down and is blocking a road uh, and you need to pull another vehicle in to help it out. And so I also want pull outs so you can pull off the road. And so even a one lane road, you know, you have to have enough room to open your car door and get in and out or load things in and out. So it's going to be probably a car and a half wide or a van and a half wide in my case. So that's something to think about. Look, we've got some great Himalayan blackberries in here. I think these are Himalayan blackberries or they're the native ones. We have both of them going on here. And uh, those we put in and forgot in various places and, and they've lived. The Himalayans have not thrived, but I have a lot more blackberries in general than I had before, including the native ones. A lot more of the native ones. That's exciting. So this is a case where I guess we would just go in and clear out the, the plants I mentioned and then see what we're working with. But this is a wonderful opportunity to actually have for more intense human use uh, because there are no trees here anyway right now, so it's not a problem. And I need to connect the upper spaces with the lower spaces. Because uh, I've got two one-way roads that go to a space that's way over there. Uh, since we're here, we'll look at it. The, the, the place with the bananas, uh, all this was bulldozed into two level layers. 
In retrospect, I would have done it as one layer, but whatever. It's fine as it is. And it's now, this was 10 years ago, it's now filled with pine trees that are, that one over there is, uh, I don't know, it's six times taller than me. And there's a bunch of other ones in there. So this is another case where we would have to go in and selectively clear it out and see what's in there. I think that might end up being great camping. Initially, I thought it would be like a parking lot and it could be car camping, you know, because I because there's a road up there that, that I want to eventually be my main entry uh, for other reasons beyond the property of access and roads and things like that. But that's actually going to be my best road to get in. It currently is completely unusable. But uh, every other road I have to get here has problems too. Like, for example, I don't own it. <laughs> so I can't, I can't invite, uh, you know, 60 people to come here uh, and have 30 cars showing up or whatever. People should carpool anyway. Is it worth it to walk around on this other side? Well, I got to get back anyway. I certainly seem to ramble on quite a bit. Ah, God damn, look at this beautiful madrone tree right here. This is a beautiful, look at the, the curvy red bark in there. This is an Arbutus species. We have these in Seattle too. They have them all along the west coast. I don't know where else in the world there are, there are these, but um, it's got these beautiful white flowers here. And then later it's going to have really nice red fruits. And it's called a strawberry tree. That's one of its nicknames. And those fruits are actually edible. And I want to make a mezcal using those. Uh, that'd be cool. Yeah, looking at this from this perspective is very different. It actually is pretty big. It might be three acres. I don't know how big it is. Now, that's the other thing is I'll probably map it out. The thing is I have to map out the entire property. I, I mean, the kind of thinking I'm doing for this very small part uh, is the kind of thinking that has to happen for every single place as opposed to just bulldozing it all and building what humans want we can maximize what nature wants all of nature not just us down here I have a little camping spot we dug out uh, behind me we've got a really nice little building here it's a hut it's a uh, made of cob, made of mud. It's a mud hut. I don't know where I'd pick as the end of this grove. I guess I probably wouldn't include this hut in it. It's just a different thing. I'd probably pick over there if I was mapping it out and call that that grove over there. Also, it needs a name. Naming is a magically important uh, process. And it has to be a name that is comprehensible in Spanish. Makes sense in Spanish. And there are a lot of words that make sense in English and Spanish, since uh, some of English is Latin-based. Not all of it, but some. And so there's no reason not to come up with names that don't work bilingually. In here, with this road, oh, this is actually a pretty good road. It gets used. Roads that don't get used here just grow right over. <laughs> if you don't use the road for three years, then you're going to have to do work to be able to drive across it. Because it just grows over, which is a beautiful thing. It's how roads should be. It's a lower footprint and, and also makes me less scared about doing things like bulldozing out a new road. Now in here, this is gonna be so different right in here. We haven't cut here yet. And I'm not sure how far the, the plague got to over here. I don't see any plague. I mean, heck, maybe we're almost done. Dang it, I'm, I'm almost looking forward to cutting it now. Although if we don't have to cut it, even though I've got all these plans and I, I want to drop these plans for long-term future of this spot, if we don't have to cut a tree, we're not going to cut it. Because there's plenty of them we have to cut. I have no urgency in the designs of this area. However, I do want a trail that goes up this way, I guess, and slowly goes up this slope up towards that hut over there. And that might be a cool spot to put some neat little tenting spots, you know, be kind of up and off the road a little bit. Uh, and I should probably widen this road. In general, my roads are too thin, and that's because I didn't want to rip up the earth too much. I wanted to be really careful. And it was a big, scary bulldozer. It was really cool. 
the driver was elegant with it. And we worked very carefully together. So we're back to where we started. Considering one grove. The other consideration is shade. That's all going to take care of itself with these oaks that are in here. And I don't care how big these oaks get. Oaks don't fall over like pines do. Pines just fall over all of a sudden in a storm and squish stuff. Oaks don't do that unless there's a reason. Uh, and so what I want to do in this case is get rid of all the white oaks and keep the black oaks because the black oaks keep their leaves all year long and provide shade then all year long. And shade here is really valuable. I'm at about 2,200 meters or almost 8,000 feet, something like that. And, uh, and so that sun can be really harsh. You know, in the springtime, you get really hot days in April, May. And uh, you really don't want to be in the direct sun for that long. You could get a sunburn. But that'll take care of itself. We do not have to actually plant anything here at all. Now, there is a temptation. And now we're, we're getting pretty far away from permaculture principle zero now. I've already said we want to widen the roads and put in some trails and things like that. And I've already got that flat spot over there where I had considered it as a potential building site, but then I just really like the cute little pines that are in there. So I don't want to mess that up. And I did mention up, way up on the top of it, that that actually seemed like a good spot for a building for a variety of reasons. And that building could connect itself, could, could connect the upper and lower spots. And there could be stairways within it, because right now it's a, it's a trail that's too rampy. And it's near, it's near the entryway, and so, well, the future entryway. And so that would be an important building for, for, for kind of commanding that area. And it would have a nice view over, over a space down there. We get nice sun, especially with these pines coming down. If they're coming down. Oh, that one definitely has pine beetle plague right there. And you can see the leaves on the top, or the, the, the needles are a little bit too light. I forgot to look at these when we walked by them. Well, luckily, my team knows what they're doing. And then this one I might cut down just because it's, 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 it's going to get really big. And it's leaning towards that building over there. It's leaning in that direction, and so it's going to fall down someday on that building. So that, that tree is going to get murdered. I'll tell the guys next time they come here. Uh, but it's going down for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, that's one question is, would we keep any? I mean, I, I, yesterday I was looking at it, and I was kind of accepting, okay, we're just going to get rid of all these except the most pretty ones if they're not infected. But if these guys tell me that, that there's no more infected ones in here, then I'm going to let them grow. Well, that, that is infected. We could thin it a little bit, but I don't even care about that. It's fine. They're not too close. Um, it, you know, it's money in the bank, too. It's, it's uh, just more wood for later. And it's not like I have tons of people here right now anyway. So it's not like I need the space. But it is tempting. I mean, there could be a building over there. Uh, or per, well, we'll see. It's, it's, that's a big decision. That's, see, that's where you start to really mess shit up. And that's unfortunately where a lot of people start. The first thing they think, and the f first thing I thought was, wow, maybe I can do something with this land. But the first thing they think is, you know, how can I make more human footprint upon it? How can I use it? And it's like, uh, that should be like the last thing we consider. And we should do it in exactly the right way. Like if we did put a building up over there, I think it would have a really comfortable view. It would feel good. Hi, puppy. Why do I walk around talking into a little box? You cutie. Hey there, cutie baby. You cutie baby doggies. Oh, there's so many cutie babies. I love you little guys. 
girls, I guess. They're girls. Uh, they're, they're very fun. They're kind of noisy, though. Like, they, they play fight all day long. Not all day. All they do is play fight, eat, and sleep. And then fuck with shit. They do a lot of that, too. So that's it. I got nothing else. Uh, if you have thoughts or comments or anything I forgot, annoyingly noisy. Um, there's a million other things we could think up. You know, is it a good place for beekeeping? No. It's too high. It's too central. It's too high traffic. We want to put beekeeping somewhere else. Uh, if we had extra water from some structure up above, would we funnel in into those ponds? Yes, we would. Uh, would it be a great place for an amazing sculpture? Should that building be a tower? I mean, it's not, it's not, it doesn't have a view of the lake or anything, and it's not going to. But, you know, or should we dig into slope? I'm really into digging into slope. So, so should that building over there actually be dug in to this level, or even below it? And then the building itself connects the, the upper and lower level, but also provides uh, naturally cooled... I got too many dumb dogs around here. They just, they're so fun. There they go, good, they go away from me. They get a little annoying. Um, my kids. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and comment on your thoughts on it. I mean, I know that you don't, I mean, it's hard to see it in a, in a video camera. And I wish I could share with you a map of, of what it really looks like. It's a kind of a blob shape. It's kind of stretched out and long, and it's got some slope to it, so it's a little hard to picture it. I can't believe they, like, bite each other's ears and stuff. They play hard. Like, if kids weren't playing this hard, you'd probably tell them to not do that to stop it. Maybe we shouldn't tell kids to, to not roughhouse. I think roughhousing is probably really good for kids. It certainly is good for dogs. They love it. Naming it. It's, it, it has no, nothing distinguishing enough about it that, that it, it can tell me its own name. So I think any name that is good for a grove, in fact, I, I, I could have a list, that'd be another thing you could comment, is what are good names for groves in English and Spanish? So Latin-based and not too obscure. I always think up the weird names, and you know, stupid names for things like, that's called Boog Hut over there. Boog is an entity in Scandinavia that they burn for some event and I thought it was kind of Burning Man-like or something. It's B-O-O-G-G. -G. I think, yeah, and uh, I think it might have like umlauts over it or something in whatever language it comes from, and uh, that's exactly what I should not name things like. I should not name things obscure references that no one knows and, and can say, so it has to have a relatively simple, boring name. All right, well, I'll see you later. I'm going to go enjoy my day walking around looking at forest and thinking about things.